Hi friends, this is Tina and welcome to my new video. So obviously in this video we are creating my April setup and I'm really excited to show this to you and hear what you think about it because this theme ended up being a little bit different from the ones that I usually make. But without further ado, let's get into this setup video already. So as always, I am starting with my cover page for April and this time I'm actually using watercolors. I ended up using this new watercolors that I just got from Royal Talents. They gifted me this watercolor set from Van Gogh and I really like the pigment they have in the watercolor so I ended up just using it here since I liked it so much. But my theme for April is Picnic and I ended up just painting a lot of different food related paintings and picnic accessories. I was really just looking through photos on Unsplash and seeing what people bring in picnics. So I was just painting all of the things that you would normally see in these picnic photos or something like that. So I was painting all of these images to the cover page as well. And I first started with this gingham print picnic blanket. And my initial idea was to outline all of these little elements in this cover page with a new 005 gray Pigma Micron and I did it in the end but I for some reason just forgot about that when I was making this first little picnic blanket. So I just painted this first with watercolors and then I went with the 005 Pigma Micron fine liner and outlined all of these little elements in this cover page. When working with these really tiny fine liners, I always try to be super careful when pressing the pen to the paper and I try to use as little amount of pressure that I can because it's really easy to apply too much pressure to the pen and then your nib gets really flat. But in this whole cover page, I added the picnic blanket, I added an old camera, a book, a bottle and a glass. I also added a croissant and a little napkin and some greenery and strawberries and some filler elements between all of those bigger paintings. I chose to gray outline for these little elements just because I feel like if I would have chosen black or something really dark, maybe it could have taken something away from the painting itself. So I think when I was using this gray fine liner, it just kind of blended to the actual painting and it didn't take too much away from it. Also, it was a nice guide to where I wanted to add some paint. I don't often make outlines for my paintings, like I really don't know when the last time was, so it was actually really nice to do this and get a little bit more of that help when I was painting, because obviously it's so much easier when you have those guides and you know where you're gonna add the paint in your painting. I actually didn't think I would be using a lot of these Bigma gray fine liners and markers I got, but I am surprised that I already found a way to use them in my setups. I'm really happy to try out a different technique because I have not done anything like this in a long time in my bullet journal. And I really hope you like watching this as well because I know some of you are here for my more intricate gouache paintings, but I really hope this also is a more approachable theme for you because I know some of my themes are really time consuming. So I hope this is something you like watching. I was generally just adding a first base layer in the first stage of painting and then I started making some more shadows and just deepening the colors a little bit and just seeing where I wanted to add a little bit more. I spent quite a long time actually just deepening the shadows and even though this looks like a simple cover page, I ended up spending quite a long time on it, but you could absolutely simplify it by just leaving some of those details out or just working a little bit faster. I'm pretty slow painter, so <laughs> it always takes a long time for me to work on any painting, to be honest. Also about my color scheme this month, I mainly used some green, red, blue and brown in all of my paintings this month, but I also wanted to add some yellow or orange to some of my paintings depending on what I felt like they needed. But overall I wanted to make sure that the paintings still looked more warm toned instead of cold. 
I just really love warm tones and I feel like they complement all the other elements in my setup so I wanted to make sure that the overall vibe from this theme was this warm neutral summer day or spring day. <laughs> In all of my paintings, I also wanted to make sure that the lower part of this whole painting and the left side was a bit more in the shadow. So I made the lower and left side of all of the paintings a little bit darker since I just definitely needed some more shadows to some of the paintings and I think that was a good way to do it. I was mainly using this bigger round brush for everything in this whole painting, but I was also using this smaller detail brush to, for example, write the little scribbles on the book and also just painting some really small details in this painting. But by the way, all of my used products are always listed in the description down below, but if there's something missing that you would like to know what I used, definitely just write me a DM on Instagram or comment down below and I will try to update you as fast as I can. And now we are getting to my absolute favorite part of this whole process, which is making these little drop shadows through all of my paintings. I'm using my gray Pigma brush pen to just make this little gray shadow underneath all of the paintings. And this is such a simple step, but I feel like it really takes the paintings to a next level. I don't usually do anything like this, but I was feeling really experimental with this whole theme and I'm really happy I was because I really like everything that I ended up trying out and this was one of the most satisfying parts of this process because I really feel like just a little shadow brought this whole painting more alive. One last thing is that I also took this really light colored Sakura Koi brush pen to add these little gray shadows to some of the flowers that I didn't want to add any harsh shadows to. But once this whole painting was done, I proceeded to make the header for April. And if you watched my last plan with me video, you know that I was using the same kind of typewriter font in my March setup, but I really just loved how it looks and I feel like it worked so well with this theme as well. So I ended up using the same thing here and I was just writing April in this lowercase typewriter font on the left upper corner of this page. Like I said, I was feeling pretty experimental with this theme, so I decided to ditch black fine liner for all my boxes. I ended up actually using this brown gel pen from Muji to make all of my boxes this month. I just feel like it kind of complemented the warm color tones I used in this theme and so I decided to actually combine my cover page and calendar page this time and I made this small calendar on the left page of this spread. I have sometimes done it in the past but I especially felt like this theme needed it because the cover page has a lot of white space between the paintings so I feel like it looked better when there was something on the left page as well. So yeah, I made this small calendar with the Muji Chow pen and then I used my brown colored acrylograph marker to make these little dots for the days of the week. I have used this before but I ended up doing the same thing again so I just printed this old book page looking paper from Google and I was just using it and gluing it to the page on the sides of the left page. I glued this little colored paper strip to the page and just wrote notes on top. Lastly, because I love the drop shadows in my cover page, I ended up just continuing with that in my calendar spread and pretty much in all of my other spreads as well. And I made the same kind of drop shadows to all of my boxes. And that's pretty much it for this whole cover spread. I really like it and I hope you enjoyed watching this too, but let's get into my tracker spread next. So I am really repeating a lot of layouts in this whole setup. I just felt like I wasn't in the mindset that I wanted to start making a bunch of different layouts that I've never used before. So I ended up just looking at ones that I've liked in the past and I used them here. And most of them are from the last setup as well. So I really hope you don't find this video too boring because of that. But I just wanted to make that decision because even though I'm sharing pictures of this bullet journal online, it is my own bullet journal. But I was making all of these little paintings on the lower part of this whole spread and then I was making the trackers in the upper part of this spread. 
So in this painting, I wanted to add some similar things as to my cover page, but also add some new things. I added some bread, I added some picnic blankets again, and some napkins and strawberries, a camera, a picnic basket with flowers, and also some glasses and a hat, and some oranges and a glass of juice maybe, and a cheese plate again. When I was making the little picnic blankets or cloths or whatever they are, I again used a gingham print in all of them and I really like how that kind of tied all of the spreads together in this whole setup because that is one pattern that is continuing in all of my spreads. I also painted it red or blue each time. I often struggle with my April themes in my bullet journal. I actually had this theme in mind that I was planning on doing for April and that theme had been in my mind probably since last year. So it's interesting how April was one of the months that I knew my theme for longest, but I ended up still changing it completely just before I started filming. So April is my birthday month and for some reason still April is one of my least favorite months out of the whole year. <laughs> I don't even know why I have a least favorite month, but for some reason I just I just don't really like spring that much. And April is often just really this uneventful month for me and it just looks really bland outside and I don't know. I, I really don't know. I have this hatred towards April, <laughs> but but because of that I wanted to come up with a theme that would make my April a little bit better. In April 2019, we actually went to this trip to Switzerland and I really loved it there and I've thought about it ever since. So I really thought I would love to do a theme that would have paintings from images that we took on that trip. And that was in my mind for the longest time and I really loved that idea. But just before I almost started filming it, to be honest, I was like, no, I'm, I don't feel like doing this, especially now that I've done a lot of gouache landscape or just detailed paintings or themes lately. I wanted to do something completely different. And just to also say to you, you can absolutely change your mind and do something completely different if you want to. It's totally fine. I feel like if you have even a little bit of doubt about your theme and you're not really feeling it, go ahead and change it if you can. It's really not that serious and in the end it's much better to go with something that you really love instead of going with something that you're feeling iffy about. But that was a long ramble and I just basically ended up finishing this whole painting while I was talking so I really hope it's okay that I really didn't talk about the painting process, but it's kind of self-explanatory, I feel like, especially once I've done the outlines, because you can do whatever you want with this. You can just change the colors however you want or do something completely different. I again made these little drop shadows to all of the paintings and then I made the header for the spread. So obviously this is my tracker spread, so I wrote trackers in the upper left corner and I made it in the completely same style as before. So I was just using my Pigma Micron 005 to first do this kind of messy outlining of the whole font and then I was using my 03 Pigma Micron to make it a little bit darker but I made sure to leave some areas lighter in the middle just so it would look a little bit more imperfect. Then I cut these craft paper rectangles and just glued them below the header to make my little habit tracker small calendars. I used this lighter colored craft paper this time because I just felt like it worked so well with the colors, so that's what I went with. I was making the grids on top of the craft paper rectangles with my Muchi brown gel pen again. And this is kind of like a tricky pen to work with because it smudges really easily. So you either have to be really careful when making these lines or just wait until the ink dries completely. With the same pen, I made this long box for my sleep and mood tracker. And I also made this little box on the right side for any notes I want to add throughout the month. I added moods amazing, good, okay, not good, and bad, and I also included hours left from 2 hours to 10 hours. Then each day I'm gonna go and add a little dot representing my mood and hours left.
Because I really like the old book page I added to the previous spread, I also added a little piece of it in the upper right corner and then I made the same drop shadow to the boxes and that's it for the spread. Oh, actually that is not it for the spread. <laughs> I, like when I was setting this up, I forgot about the headers for my small calendars and habit trackers. So I ended up just adding that at this point and that's it for the whole spread. And that guys is a great example of how it is to record a voiceover without a script. <laughs> no, but let's get into the next spread, which is my memory spread. So as always, this spread is inspired by the amazing Monday Morning Design or Viv and I will link their Instagram down below. I've been using this layout a lot and this is one of my favorite spreads to fill in, but it doesn't mean that it's always filled in. <laughs> the same spread for March is sketched or I've been, I've been throughout the month, I've been sketching the things I want to add here, but I have not actually drawn the pictures or any lettering in this whole spread so this happens a lot it's okay but this spread is really for memory keeping as the header really tells so i was just making this little header here in the middle and then i added all of these different sized boxes throughout the whole spread so there is 30 boxes in this whole spread and i will at least try to fill in uh, each of these boxes each day and I will either draw something or letter something or just have a memory of each day. And then some days I can just go back and look at the whole spread and see what I did each month. I made some of the boxes with my acrylograph marker. For some, I just made this grid pattern. And for some, I used the brown Muji gel pen to make these imperfect boxes with imperfect lines. And for some of them, I added some drop shadows. I also glued some craft paper to be as my boxes. And because I like to experiment, like I said, I just took that book page and also glued that on top of some of the boxes to make this whole spread look a little bit more interesting. And I definitely think this became one of the prettiest memory pages that I've done. And overall, it was just really fun to work on this and I feel like I was just freely doing things without really limiting myself. So that was a really fun thing about the whole process. This next spread turned out a little bit different from what I had imagined in my head at first. So this is my content planner spread and for this I wanted to do something a little bit different because I had just painted those little elements in my previous spread. So I just wanted to make this blue gingham pattern for this whole spread as a frame. And even though I really like the idea, I didn't really think about the fact that I was liking these more neutral warm tones in my setup, but obviously blue frame for this whole spread really takes that away from it. But I still really like this spread and I think it was a good idea in the end. This pattern might look a little bit harder than it actually is to make. At least I felt really overwhelmed when I was starting, but it is really straightforward when you get the hang of it. So I painted every other box with the lighter blue color. And then I only had left these white and light blue squares throughout this whole spread. Then I took my darker blue color and I was looking at this whole pattern as vertical rows with repeating colors from white to light blue. Every second row I painted the white squares dark blue. And that's how I made it. Nothing else. That's really simple. Once I was done with the painting, I just peeled off the tapes and started working on the content planner spread itself. So again, this is the same layout I used last month and I've been using the same layout for a long time now, but it just works for me so well, I don't really know why I would change it to be honest. So I wrote content planner on the left upper side of this spread and then I proceeded to make all the boxes and small calendars in this spread. So I use my content planner spread to plan and track all my social media posts since I'm posting on multiple platforms 
and it just makes my life so much easier when I know what to post each day, what I have to work on each week, etc. I think I already explained the same thing in my previous plan with me video, but I feel like I still always get questions about how I use the spread, so I'm quickly gonna go through that. So I have this small calendar on the right side of the spread and for that I always add the posts that I have to post on each day. So I always try to make all my posts and possibly some of my videos already done before the month starts so then I can take a look at the spread before the month starts and I can make my schedule for the month. So I always mark whatever I want to post each day on this calendar and it makes my life so much easier because I can just look back at that when the month is going by and I can just see what I have to post each day. On the left side I have a little tracker for my posts for Instagram. I honestly don't use this too much anymore but I still include it because well it's a habit at this point. I also include some little sections for notes and followers on the left side and I forgot to mention this earlier, but also the little box that's below my calendar is for tasks and I can mark my general tasks for the whole month there, but there's also a section for each week since some tasks just don't have one separate day that I have to work on them. So yeah, this is a super simple content planner spread for myself, but obviously if you don't need a content planner spread, you can just use a similar layout for any of your projects or work or school or anything like that. But that was a fairly quick setup of this spread and now we can go to my random spread that has a playlist and a little painting next to it. This spread usually doesn't have a meaning or a really practical use. I just sometimes paint something or add a quote or something like that, but this time I just wanted to add some more of those painting elements and make my playlist page next to it. So like last month, I again decided to use an envelope for my playlist. So I just got this little envelope from my craft paper and just folded in an envelope shape. And I just also cut this little paper and decided to add my playlist songs there. So I made a little border for the page as well, but I just took my mini printer and printed some album covers of the songs that I've been listening to this month. For some reason, I've been listening to a lot of music for the past month, so it was really hard to fit all the album covers in this whole little page, but it was so fun to look at all the songs that I've been listening to and just combining them all in this one little page. After that was done, I made the typewriter header for this page. But then I started working on the left side of the spread where I painted some picnic related items. So like I said, I was trying to find my inspiration on Unsplash looking at these picnic photos and I just noticed how there was these elements that were reoccurring in all of the photos. So I did it here as well. I included a lot of things that I had already included in my paintings, but I tried to do them in a different way. So for this, I included a picnic blanket a bottle and a glass, some strawberries, a cheese plate, some apples, this takeaway coffee cup, flowers, book, and I also ended up adding some Polaroid pictures and a bread on a little napkin. I feel like I accidentally ended up choosing really light colors for this, or at least I didn't really deepen the shadows as much as, for example, in my cover page, which I hope I would have seen, so I could have done it a little bit differently, but it's okay. Just keep in mind that I feel like for these kind of paintings, it's really good to add that contrast. So I feel like my painting was left a little bit bland. By the way, if you're interested in recreating this theme or some of the paintings in it, just know that you can use some other mediums as well. You don't have to use watercolor if that's not one you gravitate towards. You can absolutely use markers for this. I know many of my themes are not easy to recreate with markers, but this definitely could be, and you can use gouache or anything like that. So definitely try that if you're interested. The style that I'm doing here could also be taken into some other themes, such as like animals or food, any kind of activities or hobbies or something like that. You can use the same kind of doodling style with pretty much any theme you can imagine. So 
definitely try that out if you are inspired by this video and if you are always remember to tag me on instagram at the diary and also follow me there if you are interested in painting content and some close-up of these bullet journal spreads Something I forgot to mention earlier is that I also use this white jelly roll pen to add some tiny highlights to some of these paintings. For example, I added these little dots to the strawberries with that. And anytime I had some glass or a bottle or something like that, I used it to make some highlights to them as well. So it's really handy so you can just go over those spots later without having to think about it while you are painting. Lastly, I added that graph paper and the old book page paper to the upper left corner of the spread, but now this spread is all done. And we can proceed to the last spread that I'm going to make in this video, which is my first weekly spread. I apologize that I'm not really talking about the painting process that much, and I'm also skipping some parts of the process in this video. I had a lot of footage and to be honest, I'm kind of struggling with what to say in this video because I really don't know what to say about this process. I'm pretty much just coloring in these images that I have already drawn. But tell me if you would be interested in seeing like an in-depth tutorial or a video on how I use watercolors. To be honest, I really don't even know if I have a certain style or if I'm the best person to teach that, but I could still do it if you are interested. But for my first weekly spread for April, I chose a layout that I don't really use that often, but I always love it when I do. So I chose this layout where I have these borders around the whole spread and then I have some paintings in the middle of the page. Then I will have my dailies above and below the painted areas. I feel like this spread especially has a really summery vibe. I think the colors that I chose ended up being really vibrant and I chose a lot of oranges. So this definitely has more of a summer vibe, but it's okay. I'm really looking forward to summer, so I really don't mind having those vibes in my bullet journal. I always get some questions about my weekly spreads and what to include in them. And I personally always love the journal in my own weekly spreads, but I also add some tasks or events, depending on if I actually have any events in my life. <laughs> but yeah, I mostly journal in my weekly spreads and I write about my days and all the good and bad things. I know some people like to focus more on the positive things in their notebooks, which is of course understandable as well. I would like to write whatever I want in my journals, but to be honest, since I am sharing it online, I do have to think about what I'm writing there. I do not include any super personal information there. Even though I am writing in Finnish, I know most of my followers wouldn't even know what they say, but still I want to keep myself safe and that's why I don't really write the most personal things in my journal. I would also love to remind you that if you are sharing photos of your journal on any social media platforms, make sure that you don't include, for example, events and places that you're gonna go to in advance, because even though that might seem like such a small thing, it really could put you in harm as well if you are sharing some places that you're gonna go to and even like going to a coffee shop this and this day at this time. Some people could use that information in bad things. And even though those kinds of things are really rare, I would still be really careful. There's really no harm in being extra careful. And you can obviously just avoid this by sharing photos of your unfilled weekly spreads in your social media platforms like I do. While I was talking about that, I got this painting done. I actually ended up including a couple of other little elements in this painting later because I felt like it looked a little bit empty. But again, I just added this drop shadow to all of the paintings and then I cut out some pieces of the craft paper and the old book page and glued them to inside the frame on the lower right corner of the spread. 
So initially, this is the same layout that I used in January, if you watch my January weekly spreads video, and I just really like this layout, so I had to use it again. I wrote notes in the lower left corner of the spread and added these crash paper circles to all of my dailies and I wrote the dates on top. But now we are getting to the end of this video. I really loved creating this setup, so I really hope you enjoyed watching me create this theme as well, even though the style is definitely a little bit different from what I usually do. And I also hope you don't mind the all over the place voiceover this time. But we are just quickly going to flip through all the spreads that I made in this video. And obviously I'm going to be posting my weekly spreads video later, so keep an eye out for that. But don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you did like this video and also leave a thumbs up and leave some picnic related emoji down in the description if you are still here. Thank you so much for watching and I hope to see you in my next video. Bye bye!